know, it's nice we're not being photographed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I like that. Um, and we'll just talk about you and creativity and your process and whatever you want to share. Well, maybe by the end of this show, we'll have a name for my new painting. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> I just, well, we'll talk and then I'll tell you at the end. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Welcome to In the Act, a radio program on process and the creative life. Creativity does not just start and stop with artists. We all make aesthetic or guiding decisions. Our aim is to talk through the process and investigate how we choose to express ourselves and live creatively. We are connecting with people about their lives. That is the subject of our show. Broadcasting from the studio from Mead Public Library in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <clears throat> I'm Erica Hunsinger, and this is In the Act. And today's guest on In the Act is uh, Kay Jelenic, and she is an artist former teacher, mother, friend, you name it, extraordinaire. So, Kay, thank you so much for being on in the act with us today. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to have dialogue about the arts, especially the visual arts. Yes. Yeah, that's your um, mode of work. For sure. I was wondering if you could tell the listener what you do and what you do. Yeah. Well, I just want to fill you in. From kindergarten through 12th grade, I had no art. So when I went away to college, I looked at my dad and I said, when we were in the art department, I said, I want to be an art teacher which was kind of odd. <laughs> wow. And I never deviated from that. Um, and so um, I started out very, very rudimentary. Uh, I knew one artist, Pablo Picasso, and we had to um, take an artist and kind of imitate part of his style so you can guess who I had to take. <laughs> but... Um, my family was always creative, and my dad and uncle had a grocery, a supermarket grocery store, and we had lots of boxes and lots of paper. So it isn't that we didn't do anything. We just didn't do it formally. Uh, my style has developed a lot over the years um, because I taught art for 30 years, kindergarten through adults, and... I really believe that when I was teaching that students should do things similar to what artists do, not step-by-step -step things. So my, my art was all, I always did the project before the students did, and they didn't copy it, but I wanted to experience it. It's a great point. And mm -hmm. um, so in my art... And I've done art for quite a few years. It slowly developed from, first of all, working with casings, oh, mm -hmm. then on to oils and, and maybe acrylics back then. Can you tell what casings are? I think it's a milk-based paint, isn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. been so long ago. Right, yes. Um, and it's water-soluble. Gotcha, okay. And then mostly oils. So I did a lot of oils when I was getting my master's. Everything I did was pretty much oils except for some watercolors that worked in there. And I, I, um, my style, you asked me about my style. My style has evolved into more abstraction with visuals that show simplified images. Like a yeah. flower isn't a real flower, it's a design flower. Right. But the more important thing about my art is that there's a lot of philosophy in my art. It isn't just what you see. It's what I'm feeling, and it takes a while to bring it together because I don't draw it out and fill it in. Right. <clears throat> I work directly with the mediums and... I go with the flow, so to speak. 
So I'm really pretty much in some ways an introvert um, because I don't mind being alone, but I am definitely an extrovert when it comes to art and to my painting. And right now I'm doing mostly uh, work with alcohol ink, huh. um, gel pens, and a lot of collage, a lot of collage. <laughs> and drawing collage from different places, like like end of tubes on acrylic paint and paper and some I have, assemblage. I have just rows and rows of containers of things I've pulled out that I think would work for me. Yeah. Sometimes it's part of a card I got from someone. Sometimes it's a piece out of a magazine. Sometimes it's something someone gave me, like Eileen Ernest gives me some of her biomo clay pieces, and oh. I include those in it. Nice. <laughs> um, but there is a definite message. Like I have a piece at Plymouth, and it's called Virus in My Heart and Head. And it was definitely done during the pandemic. Yeah. And it started out with alcohol inks um, and then drawing with the gel pens. And like I said, I don't draw things out and fill it in. I have no preconceived concept. I have an idea, but I don't have a preconceived concept. Which is so a good distinction. Mm -hmm. I go with the flow of what's happening on the piece. Yeah. And that's really important to me because um, when I see other people's art, if it doesn't have an element that tells me it's them, then I'm not interested in buying it. It has to have something of them in it. And that means more than just a perfect technique. Yeah. That means a spirit of them. And how can you tell? How do you know? I don't know how you know. Um, <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Because I look at something and it isn't just a replica of a beautiful scene they saw in the river. It's right. the way they put the paint down or the composition or how they draw you, you into it. Yes. But it's got to be more than just what they're looking at. Right. And I combine a lot of things. Um, but anyway, going back to the virus in my head and heart. Yeah. Um, there's a big kind of sun-like image with a purse, shadow of a person, a kite up in the sky and movement and something that represents the virus. And then I actually took, and I had uh, uh, inks all over, so it was colored to start with. That's how I usually start out with putting the alcohol inks down. Okay. But on this one, I wanted to, you know, it was probably during more of the initial pandemic, and there was a lot of things going on. And I cut a lot of slices of collages. Sometimes it's from other watercolors or other art I have. Right. Or I have a whole file of paint samples I got from Ace and Milton. Nice. <laughs> that they were going to throw away. So I have all this stuff. <laughs> right. And um, But what I did is I had the figure in the big sun because the sun represents hope, kind of. And then the kite always represents hope to me and the dragonfly over here, things that fly and lift us up. I see. Right. And sure. um, so all these little tiny pieces, uh, well, they were about maybe six or seven inches long, but very thin. And I just threw them down. And then I went back and organized them oh. so that they're radiating but I wanted to... You mean you threw them down? You literally, like, threw... Okay, yeah, I, I, that action. That's a technique sometimes I use because then you have a place to start and you can redo it. And the reason I like collages is as I'm aging, I can't stand so many hours and I like to stand. And so I put a disc on and I go down the basement, which sounds terrible, but it's not. And when the disc is over, I have to take a break. 
And usually it's opera or or something I love uplifting. that. Okay. And so I did. Opera I, and uplifting, I got to say, as an aside, is a funny comment because yeah. it's not necessarily <laughs> uplifting. But <laughs> well, the, the, it has its the music energy. is very important to me. I agree. It's Great. an integral yeah. part of my I love process. That. Yeah. And whether it's that or something else a little less classical. Yeah. You know, it's something that's part of it. Yes. But anyway, so then I thought, well, you know, there's all this talk about the virus and what people want to do and don't want to do. And it's so frustrating. So it was taking all these pieces and trying to bring some order to them. Sure. But wow. then Great. I found a stamp from World War II. And I didn't mean to turn this into statements that cause people problems, but my uncle was in World War II, and I was actually alive at the end of World War II. I think I was alive <laughs> because I remember getting letters from my uncle who was stationed in England. They were little ones that were printed, and I still have some. And, um, and I thought, you know... I want to put this in the corner because there were many, many times in our history where we had really, really serious problems. Yeah. And I've read many stories that take place during wars and during, you know, even Pearl Harbor and all those. And I thought, you know, it's, it's sad because Way way back in all those situations, people had to do a lot of things mm -hmm. that they didn't necessarily want to do. Yes. But anyway, so, and then right next to it, I put a little tiny part from a flyer, I guess I'll call it, that we gave out when my husband died uh, in 2004. It was, if I had my life to live over again, I'd pick more daisies. Wow. And I don't know if you've ever read that poem, but that was one of his favorite poems. And he wow. picked a lot of daisies. But <laughs> I thought, you know, yeah, let's pick more daisies. You yeah. know, let's, let's keep working to make things bright and happier, like the colors in the yeah. picture or in the piece. Right. So that's, that's still out. Um, but Oh, lately, all of my pieces are heavily collaged in alcohol inks. And at first, when I started um, using the alcohol inks, I was in a show, and and I thought, these are almost gaudy to me, you know, and I, I was very concerned. But I have to say that people like the bright colors, and... They've been selling, so I don't have much <laughs> back stock yeah. because it doesn't matter where they're from. And I and I thought, well, why do I was a little timid because I thought I just don't know if I understand why they why these are okay with people. But uh, it's proven over and over and over that maybe it lifts them up. I'm not, and it has to do with the philosophy, though, too. Which, would which, you talk a little bit about your philosophy? Well, even though we all have difficult times, difficult yeah. days, different, difficult periods in our life. Yes. It has to be balanced by joy. Mm -hmm. And one of the books that I brought, because I love it so much and I don't want to give it to anybody, but it's called Joyful by Ingrid Felton, Felton okay. Lee. And I don't know that, but by the, I'm going to tell our listeners, there are tons of tiny little colorful bookmarks that are on the side of your book <laughs> that I noticed of pages that you might want to refer back to. Or And the reason I brought this along yeah. was as soon as I saw a blurb somewhere, I had to order the book because this, it was in a different country, but this mayor 
or this person that became mayor was an artist. And I can't tell you what country it is because it could happen anywhere. But as soon as he was mayor, he started painting a building orange in this dingy, troubled town. And people wondered what he was doing. And then all of a sudden, other people started painting their buildings different colors. And things started to pick up. The town wasn't as trashed, and people were nicer to each other. And boy, that caught my eye right or my ear and eye right away. Sure. And uh, it goes on and on about things, but part of it. And I asked one of my friends, who knows me and my art pretty well, what is it in my art that you think I'm? Why do I produce, or what's included in it? And she said, just like this, nature and my garden, which is really important, because we get so involved in looking at our phones or walking fast or something that we don't stop and look. And I don't mean just stop and look at what's there. I mean look further than that. Yeah, Like I have a pilea plant by my window, and it's a beautiful plant. And when the sun comes in my window, I see not only the plant, but the shadows on the plant and the veins and everything. Yeah. That's the kind of looking I'm talking about. It's, it's be, beyond looking at what's just there, you know. Um, the cursory look, right? Right. And, um, when I taught at the high school level, I used to use a bioscope, which is a telescope or microscope that focuses on a screen. <clears throat> and I would flick through all kinds of slides to show students how things looked under it. <clears throat> because oh, biology neat. was the way I really got interested in art oh. when I was drawing the grasshopper, the earthworm, and colored inks. And that's what led me into of art. Course. And if I hadn't gone into art, it probably would have been biology. Right. Wow. So then after they looked at a bunch of slides, more than blood, but, you know, different things. Yeah. I would say, okay, now I want you to think about the essence of what you saw, and I want you to create your own design. Wow. So that That's was That's a one profound of my, thing to say to, to kids. It was, it was an to interesting anyone. thing. So I still hold that in my heart because there's so much to see in nature, but you have to delve into it. And you, you know, you, and, and it also has to do with movement. If yeah. the wind's blowing, what happens? At night, if there are shadows, how, I love shadows. Yeah. And if there's a flower, which often is from my garden by my window, and the sun's coming to the west side, then I grab a piece of paper because I love the shadows, and I'll trace them and I'll move it. And and then, you know, sometimes I just develop that as a piece of art. Right. But um, but there's something about that essence. So, so I remember my friend Kathy Belling, who taught at the high school in Janesville, and I uh, did a lot of collaborating together, and... One night, I don't know where we were walking from, but she was uh, pointing out all the shadows. And I, you know, now I can't even get it out of my head because it's more than the shadows by my sink. It's that, have you ever noticed how I used to drive from the country into my school and all along the country route was were sandhill cranes and trees and grasses? Yeah, and I would notice how the shadows, how the shadows fell on the grasses, yeah. and how they didn't just go straight; they yeah. just bent with whatever it was they were falling on. So I would say nature is one of the highest things. But then, um, this friend of mine said, "It seems that each piece has a personal experience attached to it, and that's for sure." And that's probably the most important thing because I love philosophy and I love thinking. And 
I love comparing things and and having a lot of thoughts and gelling them. Um, yeah, and then having them. Um, it's not an illustration, but it's it's a definite feeling. Sure. And the one that I don't have a name for started out with alcohol inks, and the top got very dark. And I knew kind of what I was going to do, but it was probably one of the hardest ones I've done in a while. And so then I had brighter colors below, and then I looked at it and I thought, okay. (laughs) What I was trying to show, which I did in a smaller one, is there are many, many dark times in people's lives. But if we wait a bit, the bright colors and the joyfulness comes out. And so I like to compare feelings. And this piece has the heavy, heavy black, uh, not black, dark blue. with It looks like spotted, like it's raining. And then below it, it's got a kind of orangey, red, yellow area with lots of things growing up. Yeah. Lots and lots. So right now I'm thinking of one. It's not going to be quite as heavy as that, but my mom loved morning glories, and trumpet flowers are related to morning glories. Or morning, um, what am I, evening prim? I, I'm getting mixed up here. Okay, morning glories and moonflowers are related. Oh, right. And moonflowers are white, and morning glories can be a lot of different colors. But she loved blue. And this summer I had all these blue morning glories growing on my deck. And when I looked at the morning glories and then up at the blue sky, it was like they just melted together. Oh, I love that. So I don't know what's going to happen, but something will yeah. happen. So. <laughs> And that sounds great. Where do I come awake at night? (laughs) (laughs) I want to talk about that too. Welcome back to In the Act. I'm Erica Hunsinger, and we're here with Kay Jelenic. And you were just about to start talking about how how you paint. Is that what you were well, going towards? Well, I was talking towards? about when I first started painting. When you first started painting. Besides the casein, it was oil. Right. And And I once asked my main instructor, why didn't you tell me to get out of art? Because she did tell another person she wasn't going to make it. And she says, well, you worked huh. so hard because I didn't know anything about art, you know, when I came there. But I loved it. Yeah. And, of course, I had to take art history and all the other stuff and, you know, but. And, and you have a great love of other artists and, and researching and, I mean. But now i got to deviate because after – I taught the second year. Yeah. I was supposed to go on a six-credit art tour with UW-Madison. Okay. And I had my shots and everything, and it was supposed to be, you know, towards my master's. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they canceled it. And, oh. and at that time, I was single, and there were four uh, women teachers that lived downstairs, which was where I lived, and then four women that lived upstairs. Eight teachers in one house. Wow. And this one friend who was a woman's bi ed teacher said she'd go with me. So as soon as school was out, we flew to England. From there, I went to Scotland, flew across the whatever it was, it's been a while, (laughs) the Straits, and landed. In we were in Norway, Denmark, and Sweden, and wow. I love those Scandinavian countries. And I spent so much time in the Den Permanente looking at all their high-quality designs 
that she almost kicked me out <laughs> <laughs> because she she told me at one point, you know, I teach women's bayad and I'm I'm tired of looking at so many many nudes. <laughs> I said, well, you go do something else then because I did. We did go to all the museums, wow. Tiffany, T- Tiffany, and and like I said, I spent. Lots of time in the design centers because they were so unique. And then from there, we went down to Germany. <clears throat> we And uh, we started in Germany on the 4th of July, and it was interesting because we usually stayed in, well, it would be kind of like our bed and breakfast, but yeah. we'd go to the train depot and we'd find a place to stay. Yeah. And they were showing the fireworks from the United States. Wow. The next day we picked up a little Volkswagen and my friend was very tall and we drove, and I won't tell you every, everything, but we drove to Amsterdam. Okay. And at that time everybody had different coinage. So right. we didn't have the right money. Right. And we were holding up the whole line to get on the ferry, and they were saying, "No, you <laughs> know, no." Well, then I picked out picked out a Kennedy half dollar, and all of a sudden, everybody wanted a Kennedy half dollar. Oh! And we found out that as we went places, if we showed one person, all of a sudden there were a whole bunch. So that was kind of our saving grace. But we went to we went to every museum and. Uh, and then from there, we went to Germany. And, you know, besides seeing the art and and the scenery, the food was interesting. But we, we, would go, we, we kept going along, and we went to Vienna. And, and this is something that I haven't really shared much, but yeah. I noticed that people were wearing very colorful clothes. And they didn't, what we would call, match. They went together, but they didn't match. Yeah. And I thought, gee, this is exciting. Why is it so boring in the United States? Right. (laughs) And I think technically that influenced my art because I love pattern. I bet. And eventually we kept going, and we ended up in Italy and along the French Riviera and back in Paris. So we went to all the museums. and. One of the th- things that I will never forget is we had I had a print of a mark of a Paul Clay head that was oranges and the, and his style of course is simple and it was in our dining room at when later when I I don't know I guess I had it before because I wasn't married when I went to Europe but anyway. Um, when I went to the museum in Switzerland, here the piece was much smaller than the print I had. Right. And usually it's the opposite. Right. So mm-hmm. it was eye-opening. I know in Tivoli I saw some of the Degas, and they, by the way, gave all their beer profits to the arts, <laughs> which was interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But later when I was teaching figure drawing, to students, young students, fourth graders. And I'm going to throw this in there. <clears throat> you know, drawing isn't, to me, necessarily about copying. It's about learning how to look. Yeah. And when people, like, I had fifth graders drawing hands. And Those are the I, toughest subject and I matter. Said, oh I my don't gosh. want you to just look at the hand and draw it. Right. I said, the technique we're going to use for this is look, draw, look, draw, and take every little thing a step at a time. Well, the principal happened to come in while they were doing this. And, I mean, their drawings were as good as mine. Wow. But I think, and it was the same with figure drawing, I mm-hmm. would say. You don't just look at the figure and put a head and arms and legs down. You look, you know, at the part you're drawing and there were some fourth graders that were, I mean, we we modeled. We had models and stuff. But that, to me, is the essence of art, learning how to look and to draw. If it, When you are drawing or doing any form of art, to 
pay intimate attention to what it is, you know, yeah. like you, like you're smiling so I can see your teeth. And yeah. it wouldn't be like you're just going to put lines and put all the teeth down. You're going to you're going to draw almost individually. Yeah. You know. Right. So now I lost track of where I am. But. Well, I love that. I mean, I think, but that's the nature of talking about art and creativity, I think, as well, Kay, is that many times in these interviews and these talks, these conversations that we have when we're talking about creativity, because there are so many stems and because it, they're, the origin of creating comes from such this, su such an abstract place many times that your conversation then becomes a little abstract and we lose track of where we're at. But that's the nature of, of that, um, abstraction and, and reflection and reintegration, right? Of like, I think so much of what you're talking about is how not only do we have to look carefully when we're talking about art, but with ourselves and each other. And that that's part of, what you're talking about, the process of making, is like the process of being. Right. And there's one more thing my friend told me about my art, which yeah. I know. I agreed. I said, how would you come up with those three things so fast? And she <laughs> said, I have a lot of playfulness. And that is for sure. Yes. And I really believe, like, I I totally believe how important it is for for. Ba babies growing up to continue to be playful. And yes. I think it's important for adults to be playful too. But so many adults are so afraid of art. They, they say, well, I don't know anything about art. I don't know, you know, I don't know what to do. Show me what to do or tell me what to do. I right. said, no, that's not the purpose of art. The purpose of art is you go into it thinking you're going to experiment. And I, and I did do some wine and art classes with Peg Halbert at Blue Harbor. But I said right away, I'm not going to have them copy one piece. Right. So <clears throat> when we did still lives, I had a lot of different still lives by different artists, and I went and bought flowers and fruit and set up things. Yeah. But to me... If you really want to experience something important, you have to be brave enough to just go out on your own. Once I told Peg when we were doing these things, I said, <laughs> the kind of workshop I'd like to give is put, I'd like to have a whole bunch of bags, and we put in a whole bunch of stuff, just yeah. stuff, art stuff. Yeah. And then the people come <clears throat> and we say, hey, in two weeks, we want you to come back with something you did with what's in these bags. Okay. You know, we've never done it. I like it. I Keep going. What? But yeah. the point of it is, is the experimentation is so important. And do I fail? There were some nights I'd go up from working on my last piece and I'd say to myself, I'm never going to finish this because it was very involved. Yeah. And... Like I said, I, I, I knew, I knew what I was trying to do, but it was taking shape yet. Sure. So, which um, is a, I think a really difficult space to be within is when things are starting to take shape or, and you're not sure what direction to take it. It's uncomfortable to not know. Um, and you're, you keep working through that, but you're out, the hours in which you work are, you work. You start late, and you work through the night. Sometimes well, I'm not doing that quite as much, but I did the other <laughs> night to finish my piece. Um, but I, I, I have some hurting problems. But I try not to talk about. But yeah. I can't stand so long anymore. I try to still. I I don't know if I should say this or not, but. The doctors I go to tell me, and I think it's true because other people say it too, never give up your art because they say your art is what's keeping you alive. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, don't take that wrong. Yeah, no. It just means it's an essential part of 
of some people's lives. Absolutely. And I have another friend that's maybe about my age, and she says the same thing. Yeah. And it's more than a Sunday painter. Yes. You know, just because we're older doesn't mean I'll be 85, and it doesn't mean that we're gone. <laughs> it. I mean, there were a lot of older artists and I think of Matisse laying in his bed, not doing very well, and pointing up at the wall and having his helpers move shapes around. Right. And I think of um, other artists, too, that uh, I'm trying to think, Frida Kaleo, you know. Who Kale, had, right. And yeah. I'm not trying to compare myself to them, but I'm just saying, you know, the arts are so important, and they're so important to young people, too. Absolutely. I, and I think that essential thing about play uh, being such an essence of your work and for essence of people to to use and utilize is is so important for that experimentation is an, another word that you used for that. Welcome back to In the Act. I'm Erica Hunsinger, and we are here with Kay Jelenic talking about process and essences that are important to you and your work and to working and aging and everything else. Everything else. <laughs> yeah. There was something you said you wanted to share. I do, but then I found a couple other things that are really important to me. Yeah. Um, one of the things that has a big bearing on my art, and it had the biggest when I first found out about fractals. I love fractals. And a friend gave me a, a video, and it showed the iBot fat fractals, which are the ones that keep expanding over and over and never quit. Wow. Um, and I just was amazed. And a lot of my art, I think, reflected that kind of thing. Sure. Um, and I have a book on fractals, the patterns of chaos, and I love working with chaos. That's what I was explaining when I said on the painting or the collage I did where I had all those little pieces I threw down. Yeah. Then I opened them up and organized them. Right. But I, you can do other things too. And the I bought, I think I'm saying it right, fractals are actually mathematical mm -hmm. to start with. And so when I saw them on, on the computer or, or wherever I would look, it would just be amazing to me. Hey, we're living in a world where this is happening. Right. You know? right. So, and then the other thing I love is when I grew up in Preston, there's a town nearby called Lanesboro in Minnesota. Oh. And there's a neat art gallery there I love. And one of the ladies that works that work there helped Brian Andreas, who is a writer and illustrator. Yeah. And he and his crew do all of these things that are are just fun. And right now you're looking through a, a pamphlet book. It's a that, booklet that I started coloring, but they're just so, and they're, and it's I have words it, and drawings, right? And inside. I have it on Facebook. Uh, I mean, I look at it on Facebook because there's one every day too. So, but do you want to share one of them? Well, I was trying to find a short one. Sure. Short one. Well, how about this one? Okay. After he was quiet a long time, words began to come to him in dreams, and he told him their secret names, and this was the way he learned the true nature of the world. That one's a little bit heavier than some, but I, I, love just, that. I just love all these free drawings and all these sayings, and I have a wooden piece that I usually have by the front door of my house about mermaids. It's was by him. Oh. Um, 
But what I wanted to say, going back to teaching a little bit, is I wasn't a teacher that just had everybody come in and it was a free-for-all, yeah. not that kind of freedom. But whatever I did have them do had so many opportunities for their options that it was freedom that way. And I do right. think, and we had a really good curriculum K-12 for art, and I worked on curriculum a lot. But I do think experiencing the elements and principles of art individually is very important. Because if you learn, if you learn what they're all about, like values and color, there's so much in color you can learn. And you can, I don't, refer to color charts now because I'm my own colorist. Yeah. But there was there were people on Jeopardy and one of the questions was <laughs> can you name the primary colors and that none of the three could do that. Wow. And I thought my first and kindergartners knew the primary and secondary and tertiary colors. Right. And I developed games with the younger kids where when a red and blue cuz we had little, I don't know what I did, but paper coats or something. Yeah. They'd come oh, together to make a color, to make a new color. Yeah. And then I would put colored water in old milk jugs with a straw-like tube coming out. Like a pipette or well, a dropper? Kind of long. And then when the yellow and blue would melt together, you'd see the green coming Oh, right. So, I but see. color wasn't the only thing. I mean, there's so much. I mean, I, I taught two point perspective to fifth graders. And I mean, the color stuff that you're talking about sounded very science based as well. Oh, like there's yeah. such a, a Venn diagram overlap, not only with your interests, but in how you shared yeah. talking about art is and there's this experimentation that occurs. To and we did develop. a lot of color mixing, like, mm -hmm. I it's had very them, science based. I, I remember one of the things I did because it's been a while, but I still have some of my examples and some of my students' work. And I was looking through it not too long ago, and I had taught, I think it was fourth or fifth graders, about I'd taught origami, folding the cranes and different things. Oh, yeah. And then they had to draw them in a group. And draw the cranes in a group. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was the folded cranes. That's complex. And, and then they had to use, I think it was the tertiary colors to add color with watercolor. Okay. But we, we did all kinds of things and it wasn't just color. It was the perspective I developed a really unique lesson, did sculptures. We did it in high school and Adults, I taught silk screening and all kinds of things. But why do you think, can I interrupt you for a second? Mm -hmm. Why do you think art is so important for, for people? I think, Even if you're not going to be an artist, why yeah, do you think it's... Yeah, it's so important. And, and I fought so hard to keep the amount of art in the Janesville schools I hear one that. year. Yeah. And I, and I have a mission in Sheboygan too, and that's to say that there are so many good local artists in this town, and it's exciting for me to come here from Janesville area and to be so motivated because of all the arts. Yeah. All the, I'm talking about visual art in, in right now. But why is it important? It, you know, sometimes I'll feel a little bit worn out or tired out. And then I'll go to work on a piece of art. And it can be frustrating a little bit. Sure. But as soon as I start working on it, I don't think of anything else. It's yeah. like a, it's like a gift that you get. It stimulates your brain and you react and it's just so exciting. <laughs> yeah. I you agree. Know? Yeah. And, and I think it shows in your work that work that you do and it shows in you show up for things and show up for people and show up for shows and exhibitions and for yourself, and it's inspiring. Well, what's so important is I believe in anybody that wants to do art, I will not discourage them at yeah. all. And, no. and I buy a lot of art, 
and that's my way of support helping support artists. Yeah. And I don't know, it's it's just I can't see life without art. Why? Yeah, why would you want to? I mean, even in the James Art League collection, which is yeah. a pretty significant collection, and I was a curator, one of the curators for that. Oh, neat. There are some drawings I love. I mean, there are paintings, too, a lot of Edgar Payne and different ones like that. But the ones I love so much are two that were done in Orange Conti Crayon or something like that that were done in the foxholes during the during a war. Wow. And they're just, I mean. Conte crayons are like a pastel. Um, it's kind of in a like greasy, earthy. greasy mm-hmm. orangey mm-hmm. thing. And, and you know what? As an artist, here I am doing all this talking, but you don't have to talk because your art talks if people look at it and listen. Yeah. And that's, I mean, what else? Well, music does that too, I know. Yeah. But um, yeah. it's just, just talking about makes me, really makes me excited. I love that. You know? If you could share something with people who aren't making currently or are stuck, what are some of the things that have helped you or that you could share your wisdom with people about? Well, I think instead of, Worrying about what we don't know, we have to be aware all the time. When yeah. we go to shows, we don't just look at something and say, oh, that looks like a nice scene by the river. I saw that. We look at it more. We look at it in depth. When we're living our lives, we stop and we ex- when we experience these beautiful sunsets, what is yeah. it that excites us besides the fact that it's so amazing? Right. You know, maybe it's just that it's a bright spot in our life, you know, and we can make bright spots in our life, but we can't always be afraid. I, you know, there are many days where I'm working on a piece and I'll think, oh my gosh, (laughs) can I finish this or not? Because I do it, you know, I take breaks and go back and forth many days with collage, you can do that. But I I don't know what what would you say I I mean I think that going back to seeing and experiencing but that act of playing and I think that's probably the most important I do too and the accidental has so For much sure. to do with like the what can happen Oh, that's, that's setting a good, yourself up for that luck is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because the accidental is what I live on. Yeah, you no, know, I, right. sometimes it's hard to work with, and sometimes it isn't. Right, but oh, if you can't be brave enough to get some art material, I have what I call counter drawings at night when it's one o'clock or two o'clock, and I'm supposed to be on my way to bed. <laughs> I'll see some shadow or something, or I'll pick up a pencil or a pen, and I'll just start doing a little scribble, and sometimes it goes on for quite a while. Yeah. And so I think doodling is important. Absolutely. You know, doodle, doodle, doodle. <laughs> yeah. And and there was something when the pandemic was on that I read about, and so I, t- I started trying it on a little block of paper. It was just, you're supposed to put so many lines going down. They could curve or do whatever you wanted. And then so many lines going across. You could, you know, I was working pretty small. But then wherever there was a corner, you were supposed to fill it in. So there weren't any corners anymore. And I worked out some of my feelings using those because then... You just worked within that. I don't have all the details in my mind right now. But I think doodling, I mean, you can put anything down. A doodle is a doodle. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about if it's going to be up in a gallery, if it's going to sell for so much money, or if it's successful. Right. I have so many. And sometimes I cut up my doodles and put them in my paintings because they're still important they still have an important essence whether it's getting energy out 
or just the mark making or um, the form itself of just take time experience and what what's what you're processing out and not having the judgment attached to it right is is really important to do things that you don't have to judge and when I get kind of <laughs> claustrophobic in yeah. my house I hop in my car and I have to drive by the lake oh yeah and I love the water and I've done a number of pieces about the water yes but it's not that I only look at the water because there's so many cars sometimes I have to park to look at the water. But it's that I feel the water. What it's, do you mean by that? I feel the splashes. You know, it's not that I think, oh, this is water. Yeah. You know, and I notice what, I, I feel the impact of the f- splashes. I look at the colors and I think about, perspective and one of the simple perspective things was that we taught kids was things far away are are less clear yeah well that's not true when you go by the lake the lake far away is a very unless it's foggy is a very clear line the horizon line right Mm -hmm. and but i mean what draws people to the water it's the excitement of the water, you know, or the different moods of the water. Yeah. And there are all kinds of people that are just sitting down there, you know, yeah. looking at it, experiencing it. And from day to day, the colors are different all the time. Every day is different. And when it's stormy, it's really wild. And yeah. one of the pieces I had that was more recent, I just got back. And another piece I had, the regatta, someone walked in off the street and bought I got best to show on that one. but <laughs> Nice. But it doesn't matter about that part of my art. What matters to me is that I'm lucky to have found something that is so important to me that it's patterned my life. Wow. Yeah. You know, and it will yeah. continue, I hope, as long as I can. But, you know, it isn't just about producing it's about looking at art, and and my biggest joy is talking to artists. Yeah. I mean, I'm not someone that likes to go have a cup of coffee or that kind of thing, but I love to go to openings, and I love to talk to artists. And just because you go to an opening doesn't mean you have to buy something, yep. but I often do. Right. <laughs> and, and just, and, you know, being present when you're there. Not just sitting with your friends and talking the whole time, but getting up and mulling around, talking to the people that are there. Yeah. Because they're there because they like art, too. And yes. if they like art, then I want to get to know them. Right. So I think, I think, and it's harder for me because I don't drive when it's dark anymore. But Scott, my son, one of my sons, is very artistic, too, although he doesn't have time for art right now. <laughs> but... He, I'll say, for any gift you want to give me, you can take me to an opening. Nice. So we just experienced that recently again. But um, Right, yeah. Yeah. I, I think even if you don't ever create a painting, you can still be an integral part of the art scene because you can react and you can put your feelings into what you see. You don't have to always know what the artist meant. Right. Because you can experience what you see. Right. You know, so it's kind of wide open, and it's just exciting. I mean... I agree. So... Well, Kay, um, you know, you said by the end of the show, which we're kind of getting to, that you hope that maybe you could find a a title for your painting. Piece? Yeah. You did, while you were talking... You talked about the bright spot, Mm -hmm. and I wondered if that would resonate at all. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking, you know. But um, I'm thinking something that's a little heavier from darkness can come light, because when you think about the rain, you know, coming down, it can be very stormy, and it hits the ground, and all these weeds and seeds and flowers come out. And they give you all this beauty. 
And, you know, I guess we all have that type of thing in our lives. Some, yeah. Some very short-lived, which is good. But the arts are an integral part. Yeah. Of anybody's life and yep. of a community. Yes. And I'm finding that having been here since December, well, moving into my condo in 2008 in December, that the arts are so alive here. Yeah. And we just have to keep going out and showing experiencing up. Yeah. them. And it's such a Nice thing to talk with you today because you being such a great artist and oh, doing so many things and and I've I've just met so many artists since I've been here. Yeah. And it's such a great thing because I think knowing the more artists you know, the more it spurs your art on. Absolutely. Yeah. So, supporting each other and So it's I a gift. It. I think so too. Okay, if somebody wanted to know more about your work, see some of your work, do you have a social media that they could go to or well, a website? I'm a or? pretty, um, you know, it's interesting to me because I probably don't follow the rules of what artists should do. I think that's but, like maybe the definition of an artist, maybe. <laughs> but um, I, I was president of SVA from 2013. Sheboygan Visual Artists, yeah. SVA. Mm -hmm. And they have a site, SheboyganVisualArtist.org, and we all have the opportunity to have something on that site and Great. to see what shows are listed and coming up. Great. So I do have my picture and some thoughts on that site and some paintings, except so that's all the work on that site is sold. Um, but at least they can see it. So that's Sheboygan Visual Artists. Dot org. Dot org. Okay. And then I'm on Facebook and I usually share my new pieces. My right. new piece some people wanted to buy already. And I said, no, I, I just did it. I want to live, live with, with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to put it in an exhibit. But so under Facebook, then you're found under, not under K, but Kathleen right. Jelanek, right? And I, yes. And I, I try to publicize artists on a site that's closed, but the reason it's closed is when I came here, people, maybe when I was president of SVA, people said, well, how do you get in these shows? And I said, well, first of all, you go to shows. Right. And you make yourself aware where they all are. Right. And that's why I started that site. But um, the other thing is I am very lucky to show it. Uh, two fish. And I yes. had a one person show in December there, and I've still got art there. And I have Two Fish Gallery, which is an in Elkhart, Elkhart Lake. Lake. And mm -hmm. the one that I want to end with is my son Scott spent time in Australia and he went to school there for a semester, but he's also gone back. And when the fires were on there this last year, mm -hmm. or a little earlier than that, I got motivated to do a really big painting, and I love uh, Aboriginal art and different culturals. And so I did this pretty large painting, not quite as big as the door, but horizontal. And that happens to be at Two Fish. But, um, but it was important to me because it had a lot of orangey yellows and things like that, but a lot of collage. And my son actually helped me name it because he he thought it should have to do with the aboriginal. He's a good sidekick of mine, because if I want to talk about my art, he's probably the only one that I really discuss my art with while it's in progress. Interesting. I love that. It's Don't really nice to have advice, that. Don't always take but I appreciate sure. it. Absolutely. And I can see how deeply involved he still is. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Kay, for being here. I really appreciate you sharing about your life and your processes and your artwork and your philosophy. And um, it's just a joy to have the chance to sit down and, and talk with you about it. Thank you very well, much. Well, this was wonderful, Erica. I love talking to artists, and you certainly are one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Kay.
In the Act is produced in the studios at Mead Public Library in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. More information on the web at meadpl.org.